So the topic is mitosis and meiosis. And this is what happens when your body needs to make skin, hair, nails, gut, bone, more of that. And this is stuff that you've, you've, you've been hearing this since ninth grade, at least. And you have probably taken a state test in biology on this. So here we go. The first phase that I want to talk about is interphase and it's actually not really part of mitosis and I'm just going to draw a couple of things here I'm going to draw a somewhat intact nucleus I'm going to draw some diffuse chromatin I'm going to use red and blue because those are the colors I'm going to use to tell my story go rebels and we're also going to draw in a centrosome with a couple of, couple of centrioles here. But the thing that I wanted to remind you about is I remember whenever I was in grade school, which was a long time ago, interphase was called the resting phase of a cell. But if you ever kind of get the idea of how the inside of a cell looks like a city, then the resting phase, that is not accurate at all. I would say the interphase is just the life of a cell, which is very, very active, by the way. There's not anything dull or boring about the life of a cell. But at some point, most cells will go through this phase where they will want to make another, make split and make two copies. And this is what we're going to talk about right now, mitosis. And it actually gets more interesting when we talk about meiosis. So we're going to talk about both of those today. In the first phase of mitosis, which is called prophase, what happens is that the nuclear membrane begins breaking up, the centrioles begin moving to opposite sides of the cell, and instead of having diffuse chromatin, there are small little chromosomes. So imagine this. Imagine that if you had a pile of spaghetti noodles and somebody told you to separate these. Well, if it's a long noodle and it's in a wad of stuff, how successful are you going to be picking out a single noodle without it breaking? Not very successful. So somehow, in the infinite wisdom of your cell, these chromatin strands condense down into little lucky charms. You know, you can separate out, you know, the lucky charms. That's not a big problem. You could do that, but the cell does it. And interestingly, I'm kind of calling these lucky charms. I don't guess they look like that, but that's the best example I can think of. We are talking about mitosis right now. We're talking about mitosis, and we are going to go to meiosis. The next phase is metaphase. Meta is mental as Brita is beta. So we have centrioles on opposite sides of the cell, and now what has amazingly happened is that these chromosomes all line up in single file along the equator and the spindle fibers are what hold them there. We've got a big red, a baby red, we've got a big blue, and a baby blue. So that's metaphase. And remember that we learned that the spindle fibers attached to little places called kinetochores on either side. So I may not have drawn an exact connection, but this is a cartoon example. <clears throat> the next phase of mitosis is anaphase. I've got centrioles on the opposite sides of the cell. And so what is somehow magically happening now is that these chromosomes are splitting into chromat chromatids. They're being pulled to opposite poles. So I've got a big red, a baby <coughs> red. I've got a big blue and a baby blue that are coming apart uh, as well. And I meant to do that one as a black go back and do black on that spindle fiber right there. So that is anaphase. Anaphase. And then what happens next? That's bugging me. What happens next is called telophase. And so the nuclei begin reforming. You can see the centrioles on either side. And this is called telophase, by the way. This is called telophase. And in this phase, both sides get a big red, a baby red, and a big blue, and a baby blue. 
big blue, baby blue, big blue, baby blue. And then these cells will divide via a cleavage furrow in animals. It's called a cell plate if it's in plants. And then in the end, we get two, two daughter cells. That's what these are called. Daughter cells. Daughter cells. And so we have uh, an intact nucleus on both sides. We have uh, the centriole is still intact. Remember that these cells have mitochondria and smooth endoplasmic reticulum and all of the organelles. It's just that I'm not drawing all this in here. That's not what I'm talking about today. There is a big red, a baby red, and there is a big blue and a baby blue. Here is my dilemma. I have always been taught that a cell starts out with the full count. If it's a human, it's 46. It's called diploid, diploid, and it is 2N. It has the full chromosome count. Now here is where my brain started having a meltdown a little bit. Because I look at this phase right here, this anaphase, and for all practical purposes, it looks like the quantity of chromosomal material gets cut in half. So you're telling me that this is going from 46 to 46 and 46. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. But then there was like this little piece of information I was missing. And so what I was missing, class, is that each one of these little chromatids will go through interphase and will cycle through and will bud out the other chromatids like this. So that in the end, so that in the end, both of these offspring cells will have the full count of chromosomes, just like the parent cell. So they will be 46, they will be 2N, they will be diploid. They will be that. So that's kind of a, a basic throwdown on mitosis. So, Meiosis actually, which is sex cell division, we're talking about sperms and eggs here, there is actually two long phases, but I'm going to just draw the part of meiosis that where the difference happens, where the salient event happens that separates meiosis from mitosis. So let's talk about that for just a minute. <clears throat> Uh, spermatogonia are what divide. We keep getting that sound. It's a spermatogonia divide to make spermatocytes, which then will form spermatozoa. The oogonia divide to make the functional oocyte in the ladies. So everybody say spermatogonia. Uh, say spermatogonium. That would be singular, and say uogonium or uogonia. Okay, there we go. That works. These are 46 when we start out. They have the full count. So here's, I'm going to tell you kind of the different steps. We're going to talk about meiosis 1 right now. Okay, so check this out. Here is a cell. Here are the centrioles. And we've got some spindle fibers stringing across this cell, but watch what happens because there's a difference here. We do have a big blue and a baby blue, and we do have a big red, and we do have a baby red. But instead of, look up, instead of being single file, they are in the buddy system. This buddy system, by the way, is called synapsis. This buddy system is called synapsis. And the amazing thing is that part of this blue chromosome can get on the red one, and part of the red one can get on the blue one. And that is called crossing over. That event, crossing over, is that it's a kind of a recombinant situation. Crossing over is the event where the genetic exchange occurs. Now here's the beauty of it all. Here's the, the thing that will put a smile on your face because it always does on mine. 
This step is what makes one of your dad's sperm a little bit different than the last. It's why you look kind of like your sister, but not all the way like your brother. Because there's a little bit of a difference between this egg and that egg that your mother offered to this <coughs> arrangement. This is metaphase of meiosis one. But now watch what happens next. Here's where the big event happens. Let's talk about anaphase of meiosis one. Here are the centrioles. And what happens is the central <coughs> spindle fibers begin retracting. And watch what happens next, class. This is very interesting. Watch what happens next. So this, these two cells have a cleavage furrow that goes down the middle, but now instead of having four entities in each of the two new cells, how many do they have each, each on each side now? One, two. We're down to two. So the whole chromosomes move, not just a split of chromatids. So what is also interesting <clears throat> is that these two, pay attention, these two will go through what's called meiosis two, which is another step, which is basically a, a mitotic step. These are down to 23 at this point. Remember, I started with four and I'm only showing two here because it's too hard for me to show 46 and 23. But what's gonna happen is these are gonna both split again. And if it's sperm, there will be four swimmers. There will be four swimmers like that. Each one of them is going to be 23, 23, 23, 23. These are all in. These are all in and they are called haploid. Let's talk about the ladies for a second. You'll have one big oocyte that'll come out of this. There you are, ladies, big oocyte. And then you will have one, two, three, two to three polar bodies. What are the polar bodies for? They're all 23, but can they be fertilized? No, they can't be. They're just there to help split the cytoplasm. So you've got one cytoplasm with all the goodies, with all the food in it, so that when this sperm comes knocking on the door, then the party can start, right? Because the sperm, when he shows up to the door, he's just showing up. He's just like, I'm here, or she, right? It's the sperm that determines the sex of the child, by the way. Male sperm, female sperm. I've heard some people say, that, by the way, that male sperm are lighter and faster and that female are thicker and stronger. So that if there was intercourse on the day of ovulation, the male sperm would win the race. If it happened a day or two before ovulation, all the male sperms would be dead and the, only the females would survive. So there's a way to kind of time this to get male or female, possibly. Possibly. Now, listen to this. If you look at this scheme here and you started with one spermatogonium and you got four sperms, that kind of makes sense because listen to this. In the ejaculation of a male, there are about 200 million sperms in one ejaculation. That's a lot. All right? So listen to this. On that day, only about 25 to 50 sperms actually make it to the egg and there's only one that enters the egg, changes the chemistry where no one, no other ones can go in, right, that pulls the handle when 777 hits the jackpot, where's the party hat, blows the kazoo. I want the kind where you blow it and it kind of unfurls, you know, that kind of kazoo is what I'm looking for. That's just me though. So what I'm trying to say is on the day that your sperm fertilized your mom's egg, you were the fastest and the best out of 200 million. I think that's kind of cool. Now get this, out of every two fertilizations, only one fertilization makes it full term. That's, that's, that's how it rolls. So really, you're not just one out of 200 million, you're about one out of about 400 million, one out of a half of a billion. 
That is how special and important you very you are. You knew it all these years, and now you know why. Because on that day, you were the fastest and the best. So let's talk about this one more time. Just let me sum it up just a little bit. Mitosis is what happens when your body wants to make more skin cells, hair cells, bone cells, muscle cells, gut cells. When your body is getting ready to make babies, that is when meiosis occurs. And that is called gametogenesis. If it's called a gamete, it means it's a sex cell. That's a sperm or an egg. And so the main feature that happens, there's a couple of main features that happen in meiosis one. You can get this kind of blending of genetic, this genetic recombination that makes one sperm or one egg a little bit different than the last. And then also you can get this, well, you don't, you, it's not that you can get it, you get the situation where the, the genetic information is cut in half. You now have a haploid sperm, 23, and a haploid egg. Why is that important again? Tell me that. 23 and 23 what? Why is that important? Because 23 plus 23 makes 46, and we know that that is what? It's human, right? 46 is human. So I think that is a, a good review of meiosis and mitosis and meiosis. I think that's good enough. Very good.